over an exploration into the dark side of human nature, where we encounter such bizarre extremes as flights into the beyond, as well as the strange behavior of persons driven by hatred, avarice, or ambition. The tale we are about to hear is about deception and its consequences. Our setting is New York City on a cold night. Tom Tully, who drives an 18-wheel truck and goods for Mercury Express, has slept all day. He is dressing as the telephone ring. Hello? You would like to earn $5,000. Who is this? What? What's the gag? You are Tom Pally. Yeah? You will be driving a big rig from Chicago to New York. Well, yeah, but yeah, who is this? If you would like to earn $5,000, Resist arrest? Hey, now, oh, who's going to arrest me, huh? Are you the guy that hijacked that... Hey, what was that all about? Don't resist arrest. Our mystery story, Code Word Caprice, was written especially for Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor. And stars Bernard Grant and Bird Batista. I'll be back shortly with that one. One life touches many other lives, and in turn is touched. What often seems to be a coincidence can be explained by the interaction of human forces. Because of a flat tire, a man takes a late train into the city. On the train, he meets a man he has only nodded to in the past. They sit together. As a result of their conversation, the possibility of a better position presents itself. You take it from there. That is why that mysterious phone call to Tom Sully was not a coincidence. Neither is his visit an hour later to a young French woman who lives on East 61st. Hi, doll. Oh, my darling, you. Are you not right over Chicago? I didn't expect you. But well, I didn't expect to be here. Oh, well, come. Sit and explain, Tom. Mm. Well, you know, this is a beautiful place you got, Yvette. We must pay you a bundle at the office. Oh, well, Mr. Clark is generous, and um, I do have expensive taste. Well, maybe after my next trip from Chicago, I'll be able to afford you. <laughs> so? <laughs> yeah, an hour ago, some guy with a foreign accent told me I could earn $5,000 if I did not resist the rest. Uh, I do not understand. Uh, well, neither do I. That is all, he said? Do not resist arrest? And you do not know this fair man? No, no. And how does he know me and that I drive a rig? Now, how could he know my telephone number? Am I being set up for a hijack? Oh, no. Then what's it all about? I'm driving to Chicago in an hour with a big load of plastics and then returning with a refrigerated rig packed with meat. And if I don't resist arrest, I get 5,000 bucks. Who from? How? No, oh, it worries you. Yeah. yeah. Should, should I tell Mr. Clark or Mr. Harper? No, no, no. I will do that in the morning. Yeah. Oh, well, I wish you would, because we've already lost one truck and its cargo, and it's a loss of a quarter of a million dollars. It is a mystery, that truck that vanished. Tom, hmm? what would you do? Well, huh? drive the rig and see what happens. The $5,000 would be very nice, Tom. Oh, sure, sure. It's mine just not to resist the rest. It's crazy. And you will tell Mr. Clark. 
Oh, of course. I could. Well, I'm on my way. Uh, I'll report the offer to Foley at the garage. He can alert the police. Uh, do you think that is wise? Uh, if you do not do what this one man advises, you might be hurt, Tom. But Mr. Clark and the police have got to be told about the crazy offer. <laughs> if I do receive the money, we'll celebrate when I return. Two nights from now. Wish me luck. Just what the devil is going on, Alan? I wish I knew, Jack. Two trucks. Now, how in the name of sanity can two 18-wheelers disappear without a trace? Now, who hijacks them? Where do they take the trucks? How does it happen? Uh, Tom Tully will tell us. And where is he? He's been released by the police. He should be here any minute. Without a scratch on him, according to the police. Now, how do you explain that? The driver of the first truck that was hijacked, Mike Shepard. Yeah, that's right, Shepard. But he's still in the hospital. And Tully hasn't got a scratch. If he's double-crossed... No, no, not Tom. Don't be hasty. Let's hear his story first. We have lost almost half a million dollars. And well, the insurance will lose our insurance. Then what do we do? Now, that's Tom. Come in, Tully. Uh, yes, sir. Now, listen, Tully. If you have double-crossed me, I'll see to it you spend the rest of your life in prison. Now, where does it take place, Tom? Now, now look, I, I don't like to be accused of a double -talk. I don't care what you like. You set this up. No, sir, I did not. Then how come no one's touched you? That means you didn't resist. You know what happened to Shepard. Well, but, uh, didn't he bet? I mean, this Leclerc tell you? Didn't Foley call from the garage? Tell us what, Tom? Well, I, I saw Miss Leclerc the night I drove the rig to Chicago, and... Well, I told her some guy phoned me at home and said if I didn't resist arrest, he'd, he'd pay me 5000 bucks. What? Yes, sir. Uh, some guy with a foreign accent. He, he said I'd be arrested and that if I didn't resist... You'd uh, receive $5,000. Uh, yes, sir, that's it, Mr. Who this priest, is this right? Yes, sir. Now, I told Mr. Claire to tell you, and I told Foley at the garage and asked him to inform the police. You'd better sit down, Tom. Neither Mr. Clark or I heard about the phone call. You better tell us what happened. I left Chicago with the fridge rig packed with meat. Uh, it happened on the Jersey Turnpike. A police car picked me up and waved me off the road. Uh, two cops ordered me out of the truck cab. Well, then what? Well, and while I was asking why I'd been stopped, one cop grabbed me from behind and the other put a hood over my head and... When, when they tied me up, they locked me in the back of the patrol car, slammed the door, and then took off in the truck. Why didn't you resist? Well, I struggled. I tried to yell, but it happened so fast that I didn't have a chance to resist. Well, if you carry an iron rod in your cab. Sure. But I was flagged down by a police car. Tom, tell me about that phone call. Uh, I, I just don't understand it. This foreign character knew my phone number and that I drove a big rig and wouldn't give me his name. But I thought it was a gag. And then he said... Do not resist arrest and you'll make $5,000. <sighs> well, if I do get the five grand, <laughs> it's yours, Mr. Clark. Tom, hmm? is all of this straight? Don't you believe me? I want to, Tom. Two hijacking can put us out of business. Well, if Tom's telling the truth, Jack, uh, and I think he is, we know one thing. The patrol car that flagged him down was a phony. And the car and the guy's in it. The police have the car and they can trace its ownership. Yeah, but uh, where did the trucks go? That's exactly what we'd like to find out. That and one other thing. Which is what, Alan? I'll tell you later. Uh, good night, Tom. Uh, oh, yes, sir. I, I, I feel terrible, Mr. Clark. Well, Alan? I cannot believe it, Tom. It was in my apartment when I went home to change. Five thousand big ones. Oh, we celebrate, we? Well, I'm turning it over to Mr. Clark. Oh, but that's silly. No, 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 no. I told him about it. Hey, you must have forgotten. What? Well, I, I, I ask you... Oh, oh, of course, of course. I'm so sorry, Tom. Uh, but did you not tell Foley at the garage? Yeah, yeah. Well, he said he notified the police, but, well, they had no record of it. Oh, 
Tom, it was a bad experience. Uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was just crazy. I was too surprised to put up a fight, so they left me in the phony patrol car and made off with the truck. No trace of it. No. It is magic, yes? Well, I don't know what it is, except that it cost the company a quarter of a million dollars. Rig, you know, and all that meat. I got, well, look, I can't keep the 5000 be bet. That would make it look as if I double-crossed the company. Ah, conscience. It would not bother me. Someone drops money from heaven on Yvette. She keeps it. Good evening, Cash. Mr. Torque. You were an anchor one. Within the hour. The shipment is safely aboard. Already the painter's artwork. Uh, then I wish you a safe voyage. Thank you. You have the money? It is in the false bottom of this case. Thank you. Munitions are at a premium, Mr. Tong. Of that I am well aware. A shipment is not easy to predict. And the senior ass is employed for a week. I will see. If you should be boarded before you've cleared the port, you know what to do. That would be no problem. We carry much other machinery. Good night, Captain. Good night. Have a seat, Lieutenant. This is Alan Harper, my assistant. Uh, hello, my name is Mullins. At the moment, Lieutenant, my opinion of the police department is not a happy one. Uh, sir, I understand. Two rigs and a cargo hijack and not a trace of them. The losses have just about put us out of business. Have the police any explanation at all? Uh, several, Mr. Clark. Now, we've questioned Tom Tully closely. Now, either he's an expert actor or he's innocent. You don't question his loyalty. The police do. He claims to have reported a $5,000 offer before he drove to Chicago. Your secretary forgot to tell you, and your dispatcher Foley claims he notified the police, but there is no record of the call. A final point. When his rig was hijacked, Tully wasn't harmed. And Tully is still a suspect. Even though he offered to hand over the $5,000 to me? That could be a red herring, Mr. Clark. His offer is a gesture. It's that again, it's behind these hijackings, you know, 5000 is pin money. You said you had several explanations. That's right. One is this. If a gang is behind this, it's got access to some big storage garages. Your rigs are driven to one of them and repainted and then used and sold. And another explanation. You've got an informer working inside here in your office, Mr. Clark. Why do you say that? How many trucks in your fleet? Well, Twenty. Not all at use at once. What do they haul? Everything. Food, machinery, appliances, textiles, everything. Munitions? On occasion. Now, the two trucks hijacked carry food. No other trucks have been touched. Well, what's your deduction from that, Lieutenant? Well, there are mercenaries everywhere, and food is a weapon. Now, in our opinion, there's a mercenary behind the hijacking. Someone paid to hijack food and munitions. Caribbean is the market for those stolen goods. And our truck? Food stuff is transferred to other trucks, and yours are cannibalized or sold. And those food shipments are smuggled aboard freighters, and that is our guess, sir. Whoever the mercenary is, he knows when one of your rigs is picking up food or munitions. I can almost bet that when you next haul guns and ammo from the Middle West to New York, that truck will be stopped. And someone in your company supplies the information about what the rigs are carrying. Oh, that could be any one of a hundred persons here or at the pickup point. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. Well, we understand how deeply you're concerned, Mr. Clark. We are, too. I came here to tell you that we are working hard on the problem. And with your permission, we'll place a trained investigator in your garage or in your office. No, no, no. Not yet. Mr. Harper and I will think over what you said, and then we'll decide if we want to accept your offer. Thank you for it. Ah, uh, you're welcome. 
I'll say good night, sir. Good night, Lieutenant Mullen. Good night. Alan, that shocked me. I mean, this idea of an informer. What do you think of it? Well, I don't like it, but it's possible. We have to leave it in the hands of the police, Alan. Well, I'm not so sure. I'm beginning to have an idea. Operation Meat Market was a success. The code word for a shipment of munitions will be Caprice. I repeat, code word Caprice. You will inform me with those three words. Good night. As I said earlier, you cannot rule out coincidence as a factor in each of our lives. It is in the line word. It means something that happens without apparent cause, but dig deep enough and the cause can be found. Accidents are not coincidences. Neither is what has happened to Mercury Express. Who is this man named Torco? Who is his informer? Tom Tully? We will find out when we return with that too. Suspicion breeds distrust. Remember the Aesop fable about the boy who cried wolf? He deceived others so many times, but the one time he was right, no one came to his aid and he was killed. Well, just the mention of a possible informer within the trucking company could help the morale of Mercury Express. Is Tom Sully that informer? The next morning in Clark's office, Alan Harper, who said he had an idea, proposes it. Don't object, Jack, until you've heard me out. I, I want to take a week off. This is hardly the time. No, no, listen to me. I want it known that I'm taking a week off. I don't want to arouse suspicion. Say anything you want to. Say... My nerves are shot. I had to go away. But, uh, you're not going away. No. No, I'm going to fly to Chicago and drive a rig back to New York. We have a huge shipment of arms and ammo going into Chicago, and from there to here, I'll replace the driver. Alan, I, I, I don't like it. We've been hijacked twice for food shipments, and the police believe the munitions will be next. Now, if that's true, I want to be at the wheel of that trailer truck. I've already worked out with Lieutenant Mullins what I want to do and how I'll be prepared for a hijack. But, Alan, you haven't driven a big rig in years. Oh, don't worry about my ability to handle the rig. Now, here's something for you. A beeper. And high frequency. The latest. It has a range of 50 miles. And the hijacking, if it's tried, will take place somewhere near or around Hackensack. If I'm flagged down by a patrol car, I'll switch on the beeper. The police will be tuned in, too. By the time the hijackers have tied me up, the police will be on the scene and we'll handle them. Lieutenant Mullins okays this? He does. But it's important to create the impression that I'm on vacation at a beach in Florida. Now, there's one problem. I'm not sure we can keep your mission a secret. You show up in Chicago. Our dispatchers won't talk. The driver you'll replace, Mike... Maybe not the Foley here in New York, but the other drivers at the garage will wonder why he's been taken off the New York run. Well, that is possible. You see, this informer, if there is one, would be in Chicago as well as in New York. If somebody is keeping tabs on our shipments, sure. Look, I'm not saying my plan is foolproof, but we have to try something. All right. Maybe you'll get a break. I'll have Miss LeClaire book your flight to Palm Beach, Jack. What? You certainly don't suspect me that. I trust you completely. So do I. But only you and I and the police are to know about the plan. Don't tell her that. Let me ask her to book the flight. Okay, okay. I'll buzz her to come in. I'll leave Chicago early tomorrow morning. And I'll wait here until I hear from you. One way or the other. Is it true, Mr. Clark? Another of the truck has been hijacked? Good morning, Yvette. Yes, yes, it's true. Oh, I read about it in the newspaper, but this is terrible. 
I need it. It's just not possible. A truck to disappear. Oh, I agree. Hey, Red, will you book a flight for Mr. Harper to Palm Beach as soon as you can? Oh, oh uh, of course. Uh, you are going on a holiday? Oh, sort of, sort. Mr. Harper's nerves are shot, so I want him to take a week off and rest. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, thank you. Now, uh, that will you handle my calls while I'm away? But of course. You will be gone now? Oh, well, a week. <laughs> well, I'm going home to pack. Will you phone me there? Of course. Goodbye, Adam. And good luck. Uh, I'll let you know where I am, Jack, as soon as I've checked into a hotel. The police do not know what happened, Mr. Clark. They haven't a clue. It is someone who informs, yes? Uh, I suppose that is a possibility. What made you think of that? Tom. Tom Tully. A- and I am fond of him, you know. Till he showed me the money. And I look at him and nowhere is there a scratch. Does this not strike you as suspicious? Yes, it does. The police are still looking into it. It's in their hands, you bet. All right, you better find a flight for Mr. Harper. I will do that right away. Hey, good morning, Yvette. Oh. Well, let me take you to lunch, doll. What are you doing here? I am told the police continue to ask you questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just came from the police. So? Well, they can't get it through their thick heads that I'm innocent. Well, I am thinking about what you told me. The man with the foreign voice, the $5,000, and then the hijack, and you with not even a bump on the head? You think I made that up? Well, it is a strange story. Well, it's the truth. Maybe? Look, I showed you the money. I got it with me. You will give it to Mr. Clark? Well, I said I would, and I'm going to. Damn, it is not $5,000 that Mr. Clark wants. It is to sell the truck to disappear. He's very distressed. And Mr. Hopper is so upset he is going for a rest to Florida. Well, I just saw him, and he looked fine to me. He said he'd see me in a day or two. Oh? Well, he didn't seem upset. He's worried about that munition shipment from Chicago. He said that? Yeah, Big Rig is coming in in New York tomorrow night. Uh, look, if you don't have lunch with me yet, uh, how about dinner? Huh? Uh, perhaps. We will see. Uh, Mr. Clark might work late. Oh, uh, will you buzz him and ask him if I might see him? Thank you, John. I wish I knew whose money this is. Well, all I know, sir, is this guy with the foreign accent said I get it, and there it was in my apartment. Uh, you think I'm mixed up in this scam, Mr. Clark? No. The circumstantial evidence is against you. But if you were informed her, I don't think you would have told Miss LeClaire and us about it. You trust me, sir? Yes, I do. Well, Mr. Harper trusts me, too. He, uh... He gave me kind of an assignment. Oh? What was it? Well, uh, I can't tell you, ex- except... Well, I'm going to do a little listening. Uh, see if I can pick up anything around the company and in the garages. How much did uh, Mr. Harper confide in you? Enough so I might get something started. You know, he's uh, on his way to Palm Beach. Uh, yeah, yeah, nerves. But he hasn't got any nerves, Mr. Clark. Now, I've also been briefed by the police. Uh, top name Lieutenant Mullins, uh, the one who grilled me until I was busy. I see. Now, Mullins suggested placing an undercover man in the company. Did you know that? Oh, yes. Yes, sir, he told me. And you're it. Well, sort of. I know everybody, and I'm pretty well liked. I might find out something. Well, if you do, tell me, Tom. Uh, no, sir. Begging your pardon, I tell the lieutenant. Uh, I just thought you ought to know. I'm not driving yet, so you might wonder why I'm hanging around, see? All right. Snoop away. The three of you have got me so confused that... Uh, let's drop it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Please, the 
tomorrow night. Uh, you suspect the trap. A signal device from the rig to the police? Thank you. They can be neutralized, or we will have a surprise ready for them. And it's be at home tomorrow night, and I will give you a report. So. Olga, I wish to speak with the captain of the SS Sinhar. Find him. It is vital. He must be prepared. Picking up my uh, signal from the rig? Right. Now, you've been monitored all the way from Chicago. Where are you now? Uh, let's see, about 50 miles from Hackensack. If I'm not stopped, then what? Our plan is a bust. Maybe having Tom leak the information was a mistake. No, I don't think so. The girl might give herself away. Remember that if you're stopped, don't panic and don't resist or they will cut you down. Uh, we're waiting for your signal. It's up to my belt. Any sign of that patrol car, I'll switch it on. So long. What? What's that fool trying to do? She's crazy. I'm trying to crowd a trailer off the plane. Look out! What were you trying to do? Get killed? If I hit you, that tin can would have rolled over five times. Raise your hands. Hey, what do you... Otherwise, I should. Comprehend me. Well, what happened to your police car? I am not happy, though. We need a little time to use them. Well, I'll remember your face as well. Oh, I'm tied behind me. How can I switch on the beeper? Oh, I've got to activate the beeper. Oh, unmarked little foreign car. Oh, stupid. She warned them. I think that'll be all for tonight, Yvette. It's, uh, we see. You'll have to wait. Wait, there's more. No, 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 no. I'm beat. You must be, too. Get a good night's rest. Come in late in the morning. Yes, Mr. Clark. You will go home, too? No, not for a while. You are worried. Disappointed. Oh? Frankly, I expected that another truck would be hijacked tonight. Oh, and you are disappointed it was not? No. Well, I mean, in a way, yes, because we were prepared for it. I thought we might catch the hijackers. Ah. Well, I will say good night, Mr. Clark. Good night, Yvette. And thank you for your help. Hi, Dal. Tom! Hey, you remember my invitation to dinner? Oh, oh, oh I am so sorry, dear Tom, but I am very tired and I have a... It must be a headache. He will forgive me. Oh, sure. Uh, you want me to drive you home? No, no, no. I will take a taxi. You bet. Oh, he makes me jump from my skin. Yes, Mr. Clark. Listen, did it happen, sir? Listen. What does that mean? I know the truck's been hijacked. Mullins was right. Call the police, Yvette. I want to speak with Lieutenant Mullins. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, th that beeping, it, it means the hijack? Oh, no, it means more than that. It means they've got the hijackers. I will phone for my desk. Did you mean that, Tom? Uh, no, sir. But that's what I was told to say. Oh, Tom, this has got me dizzy. Me too, Mr. Clark. But it's all part of the plan that Mr. Harper and Lieutenant Mullins worked out. I have the lieutenant, Mr. Clark. What's happened, Lieutenant? Harper's rig got hit, but not by a police car. Two guys. One spoke. He was a Hispanic, that's Harper's guess. Now, they blocked the trailer, and when he stepped out, they held a gun on him and tied him up. He activated the beeper with his foot, and the 20 minutes it took him to do that. The truck was driven off. The so Harper's okay? Sure, sure, sure. I angry with himself, but he wasn't hurt. Did Tom do what he was supposed to do? Just uh, yes or no will do. Yes. Uh, well, wait there for me to pick you up. Don't ask any questions. Tom will explain. Understood? I don't understand anything. Be down in front of your building in ten minutes. I'm on my way. The sub 
object of our tale is not the occult. It is reality. The kind that each of us can understand. There have always been men, very clever ones, who operate on the dark side of the law. What drives them is greed, to become rich quick. Such men steal. One such man has engineered the hijacking of three trailer trucks. We know that his name is Torkel, and he supplies stolen goods to those who pay high for it. When I return with Act 3, we will find out more. Persons can't resist the temptation to steal. Often thefts are petty. We are dealing, however, with a professional thief, a mercenary, the kind of man without a conscience. When he steals, he steals for huge sums of money. He does not care how the stolen goods are used, even if they affect the life and death of thousands. This man is morally bankrupt. Moments after Clark received instructions from the police, is that explained? The police rescued Mr. Harper? Harper? Mr. Harper is in Palm Beach. Oh, he did not go to Palm Beach. He went to Chicago. How do you know that? But Tom here told me. Tom, come again? All I said was that Mr. Harper looked okay to me. Oh, but they know in the garage that Mr. Harper is driving a trailer with ammunition. You but... seem to know an awful lot, Miss LeClaire. Who in the garage told you? Well, it was being talked about some scheme to, to trap the hijacker. Really? That's more than I know. Uh, it doesn't matter, Mr. Clark. Mr. Harper is okay, and the police arrested them and saved the rig. Now they'll be squeezed for the name of that foreign guy who's behind them. Yeah, I think we'd better get down to police headquarters. Your loose tongue could have cost Harper his life, Tom. You have some explaining to do. Uh, you really not want me to stay, Mr. Clark? No, no, no. You go home. I've kept you long enough. I'm sorry about dinner, Yvette. I'll stop by later and tell you what happened. No, no, please. I am very tired. I will go home and go to bed early. And all of us will sleep better tonight. All right, Tom. Let's go. Uh, where was Mr. Harper's stop, Mr. Clark? Oh, Mr. Clark. Oh. Oh. Yes? Code word caprice. It fails. You telephone from where? Oh, I'm alone in the office. They receive a phone call from the police, and they say to me that the police have captured the men and the truck. <laughs> it is not true. Do not worry, you pretty head. Caprice is a success. It is not very complete. I go out to the docks. It is not like you either to be fooled or to become hysterical. Oh, that is true. Forgive me, but... No more. Later tonight, I will explain. Hey, come in, Mr. Clark. Here, take a seat. Thank you. So this is the radio surveillance room. Lieutenant, I don't get it. What kind of police setup is it? And where is Harper? You sure he's all right? Oh, he'll be here soon. What went wrong, Lieutenant? Well, the hijackers blocked out the truck signal device about 40 miles outside Hackensack. Now, Harper was crowded off the road by a small foreign car. It was that or he'd have rolled it over. Now, Harper lost his head, he jumped out and went for him. It was a while before he managed somehow to activate the beeper on his belt. By that time, the truck had been driven off. So they've gotten away with it again. It is not over yet, sir. That trap didn't work. I hope the other one will. Tom did enough gossiping so that Miss LeClaire relayed the information that the police had set a trap. When we left her, she believed that the hijackers had been arrested. And that means that sometime tonight, she will receive a report from the man behind the operation that the job was a success. Now, that's why we've got a wiretap on her phone. I see. We'll monitor her phone constantly, and tape recording is already operational. It might be a long wait, so uh, 
Would you like to get a nice rest? No. I'm staying. There's no need to lie, senor. But it was a close call. And something went wrong, Gabriel. What do you know? It's a mystery to Pedro. When the hijacks were in, Pedro thought he had an hour before there would be an alert. Did he search the man, Harper? There was nothing. Pedro would change the license plates. And only 15 minutes before Pedro drives the truck into the freighter, the police has been here. And so they finally figured out that the eggs are not hidden in some garage, but they get sick of it. It is not likely we will be able to work this same scheme again. You sail when? At midnight. Well, I will be aboard. But why? My usefulness here is no more. I will wait to be assigned. First, I must leave to pack my bag. Then I will return. At the money? The false bottom of this case. I leave it with you. The rig is being disguised. Everyone in the hold works on it now. Good. I will return within the hour. It's uh, 10.35 and still no call. Uh, you can be sure that Mr. Clare is not going to sleep. Now all we can do is wait. Mr. Harper? Yes? You should see Beth's place. You think she earned 100000 a year. Well, maybe she does, Tom. Is that what made you suspicious of her? Uh, no, no, sir. I just wondered about it. You see, actually, it was her attitude about the five grand I was offered and paid. Uh, keep it was her idea. Then she didn't tell Mr. Clark about the offer, and Foley at the garage didn't notify the police. Do you think Foley's mixed up in this thing, Tom? I don't know. I rather not say, Mr. Clark. Hold it. Hold it. A call's coming through to Miss LeClaire. Hello? Did I tell you not to worry, you pretty head? Oh, you have the trailer truck. It is now safely aboard the Cineras. And at midnight, she sails to the Caribbean. I was worried. <laughs> you must never worry. You must trust Sir Antonio. You said that Mr. Clark and the police lieutenant have gone to the police? At the time I telephoned you. And it is dangerous, the telephone. I hesitated to place this call. But I wanted you to know that when the Senora sails, I sail with it. Oh, no. Uh, but yes, my dear. We have been successful. It is a mistake to crowd good fortune. I will be reassigned. And then I will need you again. Uh, perhaps... In a month or so, we will work from Marseille. Oh, I would like that. That's the voice of the guy who offered me the five grand, Lieutenant. We'll flood the docks with police. Uh, Harper and I will pay a visit to the Cineris and introduce ourselves to the captain and to Torco. That's a nice way of putting it. Uh, well, I'll leave uh, Miss LeClaire to you and to Tom. The police will be waiting outside. <laughs> Who is it? It's Tom, Yvette. Tom Tully. Oh, go away. It is very late. I have to see you, Yvette. I'm in trouble. Oh, well, come in then. Thanks. Is someone with you? Mr. Clark. Tom has told us what a beautiful place you have, Yvette. I wanted to see it. After all, I paid for it. How do you mean that? You helped hijack the rig, Yvette, while working for Mr. Clark as his confidential secretary. Oh, you are crazy. You have been an informer. How dare you say such a thing? Because it's true. You are accusing me of being dishonest. As a matter of fact, I do. Now, you've worked for me, and I have appreciated your efficiency. But I did not think, nor could I imagine, that you were a spy. Oh, that is slander. Now, we can prove it. You work for that foreign character, Torquil. I never have Please. Been. That'll do. Well, at this very moment, Torquil is being arrested. You will never take Sir on Torquil. If you think that he'll sail in the Cinerus, think again. Torquil and the captain will be in jail before morning. Notify the police, Tom. But you cannot of prove... Of course we can prove. Now, Miss LeClaire, don't try anything dramatic. 
I would enjoy losing my temper and wringing your neck. First, uh, the captain. Then Torkoal, if he's aboard. Now, do you got your gun? In my hand. Who's there? Police. You're under arrest, Captain. Arrest? What is the meaning of this? Answer this question first. Is Mr. Torkel aboard? Torkel? Hey, no, no Torkel. He's sailing with you, Captain. I should say that he was sailing with you. This ship is not leaving the harbor. You do not dare stop me. Don't try anything. Now, you leave me to Torkel's captain. Now, he's the man I want. And we'll go through the freighter and release the trailer truck you helped to hijack from Mercury Express. I know nothing. Nothing about the hijacking. Is he aboard? I think. It's Ray. He's topside. It is our best accommodation. That's the door? Yes. Ask him to step outside. I mean, let's be tired. Don't be foolish. Now you've been caught, and so is he. Come in, Captain. Well, good evening, Mr. Torco. I do not know who you are. The police? Lieutenant Mullins. You're under arrest. The charge? Engineering the hijack of three trucks from Mercury Express and smuggling them and their cargo on the foreign freighters for sale abroad. There's an absurd charge, Lieutenant. We already have a confession from Yvette Leclerc. That I do not believe. Now, are you coming quietly? Now, the guillotine, Captain. Don't try it, Captain. Look out, Trumpel's got a knife. You all right, Alan? <sighs> yeah, sure, sure. I give the Captain a tap on the skull. He's resting quietly. What about Torkel? I uh, shot him in the arm. He won't be throwing a knife for a while. Uh, you will not get away with this. Why not? After we squeeze the information out of you about who's behind the hijackings, no one will come to your defense. You are expendable, Torkel. I hit. Well, the captain's coming around, Lieutenant. Uh, well, I'll get him to his feet. I'll turn him over to one of my men. Come on, Torkel. Come on, come on. Outside. Uh, you will regret this. I heard that before. Uh, this wraps it up, Lieutenant. He'll be getting the truck back, Mr. Harper. And he'll surely get the insurance money for the others. Now, these two will be in for a very long stretch. Code word, Caprice. Fell on its ugly face. Now, the drug smuggling is an enormous business up and down the eastern seaboard. The contraband is also being shipped inside our country, as you are listening to me. Greed is a motivation, and it has no conscience. I'll have a final word for you shortly. or prohibited commerce is inescapable as long as men devise ways to obtain something for nothing. They risk death or arrest and prison just as they have since mankind first began to cluster in villages and then in cities. It is, I fear, an incurable compunction. A beast is but like itself, but an evil man is half a beast and half a devil. Our cast included Bernard Grant, Lord Batista, Earl Hammond, and Joyce Gordon. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is Tammy Grimes, inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time. Ever thought about an all-star game featuring baseball's best all-time players? Johnny Bench is behind the plate. Christy Matheson is prepared to face Mickey Mantle up there. Mantle will bat from the left-hand side. He's a switch hitter. Two men on base. Jimmy Fox takes the lead now at first.